Yo, Benny. I don't think he's home, man. Benny, man, yo. Yo, what's up, everybody? I'm MC Savat from the Cancasaurs. You can catch me on funnyordie.com slash Cancasaurs, K-N-K-S-O-R-Z, you know what I'm saying? But right now, it's all about Benny TV. Yo, because my boy Benny the Gagoots got his own show. And I just want to give a big shout out to Benny. And in honor of that, I'm going to do a dope-ass freestyle, man. So he's got to figure out what rhymes with Benny. 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 What rhymes with Benny? Benny. What rhymes with Benny? Benny. He's in the Serengeti. He's hunting for a Yeti and he's always on the ready. And Benny's always merry when he's eating his spaghetti. But right now he's in the desert so his palms are kind of sweaty. His good friend Freddy, he brought him that Ben and Jerry. And Yetis, they love the Ben and Jerry. So Benny caught that Yeti and we all threw confetti. Yeah, Benny. Benny TV, baby. Benny TV, baby! Yeah! You don't have to always follow me with the hands. You always... I don't know what you're doing. Hey, guys, welcome to Betty TV, the fun show where, where an old man and a young man talk about movies, TV, and uh, different things. Because sometimes we don't always talk about movies and TV, but that's 97% of the time is 97%. what you're going to hear about here. Um, so, as, as we said, I'm the young man, Ryan Rizzuti. This is the old man, Benny Rizzuti. And I am the old man. Good job. <laughs> so we have a fun show tonight. Uh, tonight, in honor of Captain Marvel coming out this week, we have our superhero-themed episode. You know, you do about, like, six of these a year. <laughs> I'd say, like, roughly six to seven superhero movies. Superhero th movie episodes a year. You have yeah. to. You yes. have to now, because you got one every week. <laughs> and another superhero movie out every week. I think we have four, in the next two months, there's four superhero movies. That really? Are coming out. Four big ones. You have Captain Marvel, which comes out this week, which is why we're talking about superheroes tonight. Yes. You have Shazam, which we can talk a little bit about the fun between Captain Marvel and Shazam in a little bit. And then you have Hellboy, That's which right. comes out next month as well. And then a week after that, or two weeks after that, is Avengers Endgame. The wow, end all, yeah. be all of superhero movies. Superhero movies are really big. Now, this past the past two decades they've just blown up yeah since i was a kid since about two 2000 i think was the start of the boom with x-men with x-men which you took me to see as a kid <laughs> yes <laughs> yes uh, and i enjoyed it i didn't know anything about x-men at the time and it, uh, it's one of my favorite uh series you know i i love x-men then i think i would say Spider-Man in 2002, it was a few yeah. years after that. That's when I think it really took off. Yeah, yeah, that's when it was, when Spider-Man came out. And I always felt that way because I, I saw Batman and I saw, you know, the Superman. And I said that, uh, I had said to a friend, you know, when Marvel starts making movies about their superheroes, then it's going to take off. And it was Spidey. And it took a while for Spider-Man to actually get off the ground. Yeah, you know? no, it, 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 was, it was, I think, since the late 80s, the early 90s, they were trying to make a movie. There was originally James Cameron. He we, was signed on to make he it. He was signed on to direct it. He wanted Leonardo DiCaprio to be Spider-Man, which would have been really interesting, I think. Yeah. And, and then, then eventually we got Sam Raimi directing Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. Yes. And we've Which, had 78 Spider-Man films since. <laughs> yeah, right, and, and then, it, like you said, then it, it just blew up. Then uh, all kinds of, there were even superhero, well, movies from comic books, mm -hmm. where they're kind of superheroes and you don't look at them as superheroes. For example, Men in Black. Yes. The Men in Black are superheroes. Well, they're not but superheroes, they're, but they're Based on a they, comic book. They're based on a comic book. That doesn't make well, them superheroes. Well, they're heroes. Okay, no, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't consider them superheroes. I'm glad you brought that up to me. They're not you know, superheroes, right? I wouldn't say that was. They were superheroes. They're yes. They're special agents who who stop aliens. Okay. They. I wouldn't. They're not superheroes. Right. They're not superheroes. They're not. They're not like Spider-Man. No. 
No, no, no we're not. talking about talking about all these superheroes. I'm giving you a list. <laughs> we're going down a timeline. You just go, let's go back 20 years. No, no, no. I didn't mean that. I, I apologize for that. It, I, I got confused. We were in the I'm middle glad. of a topic, and you just go, let's go on a hard left. No, I'm glad because, uh, as you mentioned earlier, it's the old man that you're dealing with here. So the old man went, I went a little off topic because, so to differentiate, we're talking about superheroes, not other comic book uh, Super, they have to be superheroes. Yeah, we're talking about so. superhero. That's the topic that we agreed upon. Super people yesterday. With, people we, with coming up with the topic of the show, so we didn't do this on the air. Superheroes. People with powers. Also known superheroes. Okay. Yes. And superheroes. <laughs> Okay, so the, um, Captain Marvel's coming out this week, and I guess I'm doing the show by myself. No. And uh, Brie Larson's going to be in it, and you have uh, you have Samuel L. Jackson playing Nick Fury, and it takes place in the 90s. Right. So technically it's the first Marvel movie, even though it's in the MCU, even though technically it's the 21st. <laughs> so, so it's early uh, Nick Fury. Yeah, it's Nick Fury with two eyes. With two eyes, it's, right. It's uh, Coulson with hair. Okay. Um, Ronan the Accuser, who's the villain of Guardians of the Galaxy, is in it. Uh, one of his, I forget the character, I think Korvath, who's uh, played by Demon Hansu. He is in it as well. He was Ronan's like, sidekick. He's the one, I'm Star Wars, and he goes, who? He's in it, but he's a different, he's a good guy, and it shows how he becomes... Oh, all right. That yeah, character. because it's early. Uh... And it's the introduction of the scrolls into the MCU, which, if you don't know, the scrolls are one of the most popular villains in the Marvel Universe. Uh, originally, what the Avenger, the first Avengers film was, which was the assault of New York, that would have been, in the comics, that would have been the scrolls, and not the Chitauri, which is what they use. The Chitauri is essentially... When they rebooted everything with the Ultimate Universe, they made the Chitari, who are very similar to the Scrolls, but they have they don't have the ship the shape shifting ability. Because the scrolls okay. can shape shift into humans, they can turn into anyone. You don't have that when it comes to the Chitari, because I think they wanted more of a faceless villain that all kind of just looked the same. And the scrolls are a little more than that. And I think the scrolls have a lot more fan base behind them. The Chitauri are just kind of, nobody really cares. They're just like, oh, yeah, just the general, general, general villain. That's fine. Put Loki with them. That's cool. We all like that. But the Scrolls have been around since the 60s. They've been around in the comics for a very long time. There was the Scroll Wars. They were heavily a part of a lot of different huge storylines in the comics. And uh, many superheroes were possibly Scrolls. And they did a lot of stuff like that. A lot of invasion of the body snatchers type stuff. Oh wow, that's interesting. As you know, as I've mentioned, I don't know a lot about Marvel as much as I should. I know more about Marvel from the movies than actually reading the comics. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad. I'm just. Uh, I'm. I'm amazed. I'm really. Uh, I'm. I'm really amazed that you know so much yeah, about I'm, Marvel. I, I have Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, I think we all do. We all have Wikipedia, and I actually used Wikipedia for uh, tonight's topic also. Yes. Because we're going to talk about superheroes uh, then and now. Yes. Like, oh, so you mentioned, uh, I'd like to mention this superhero of mine, a movie that I like a lot, and it came out. The uh, Lone Flint. Ranger. <laughs> Is he a superhero? I mean, he came back from the dead. Okay, he came back. He did from come the back from the, the dead. Yes. All right, he did come back from the dead. All right, okay, so he's a superhero, but I'm not going to talk about the Lone Ranger. The Lone, welcome okay. to Lone Ranger <laughs> talk, <laughs> Mister Dillon. I've been bit. That's from Gunsmoke. But anyway, some people would know that. All right, back <laughs> with my dad with another hard left turn into obscurity. No, no. All right, Tonto. What do you say? Okay, well, we were talking about superheroes. All right, okay, come on. We so we were talking about superheroes. So I want to. You mentioned Sam Raimi. Mm -hmm. Sam Raimi, before he made Spider Man, he could not get the rights. He wanted to make. Uh, he wanted to make a superhero movie 
of either Spider-Man or the Shadow. And he could not get to secure the rights, so he created his own superhero. Yes. He created his own character and wrote, and it was Dark Man. Yes, Dark Man, which is a... When you hold it up to the standards of today's superhero movies, it doesn't hold up as much, but it's such a it's still such a fun, campy horror movie. Horror super superhero horror movie. It's considered a horror movie. It is very it has a lot of horror elements. It's but, uh starring Liam Neeson as yes. the titular Dark Man, and I believe his love interest is Academy Award winner Francis McDormand. Yes. Which is something I didn't know until I watched it like three or four years ago with some friends. And I was like, wait, Francis McDormand is in this too? Like, that's great. Like, I, I, didn't, I never knew that. And they have such good chemistry, and the acting is so good for what's essentially like a B-movie. Right. It's essentially like a horror B-movie superhero movie. Well, Liam Neeson was not... Uh he wasn't a, a household name. No, at the time. he was he not was, the Liam Neeson of today. He was not the Liam Neeson of today. And when I saw the movie and saw how great his acting was, I knew that he was going to be too good for that. Oh, yeah. Because they have, they did make two more yes. Dark Man movies, but they were direct to DVD. And Sam Raimi and wasn't Sam, really involved. No, anymore. Sam Raimi wasn't involved anymore. And, uh, and Liam Neeson does not play Dark Man. Yeah, but now Dark Man is a great because he is a superhero because of yes. what happened to him. No, no, hundred he percent, he's a superhero. He's a dark side and almost oh. borderline a villain, but he's definitely a superhero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's almost borderline a villain, but the villains he's up against are really worse people than he is. Oh he's yeah, a, he's a good. He he was a good man that these villains uh, drove to almost the brink of insanity. Yeah, and that's and, it's a great story and a great origin. And, it is. Uh, do we have the uh, the the trailer for that yes, tonight? Yes, we do. Is that so, our first video our of the first night? First video. All right, of so we're gonna go to the first video of the night, and it's the trailer for Dark Man that we just talked about. Who? No foolish heroics, if you please. Is Dark Man. They destroyed everything he had. All that he loved. Everything that he was. Now, crime has a new enemy, and justice has a brand new face. I was afraid that you wouldn't want me anymore. Of course I still want you. The good news is that I know who's behind our little troubles of late. Finish it. He has the power to look like any man. This two are both sons of witches! But he is unlike any man. I gotta tell you something about me. He's a cockroach. You think you're killing? And he pops up someplace else. In the darkest hour. There's a light that shines on every human being. But one. From director Sam Raimi. Dark Man. And we're back. And as you saw at the end of the video, tonight's show is sponsored by the roast for Key Fitz, March 23rd. And I will be one of the roasters, so I'm very excited about that. I'm going to be one of the roasters, Jessica Colazzo, Tim Thompson, John Santo. And um, there's also going to be some musical guests before and after the roast. So I'm very, I'm really looking forward to my first roast. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be Keith a fun Fitz. show. Yeah, it's going to be fun. The roast of Keith Fitz at the Monarch Lounge in Farmingville. Okay? I'm so. a big Keith Fitz fan. I know you are. I'm a big, You're Keith, a big Fitz Keith Fitz fan. Fitz fan. 
Me too. He's he's almost he's like a superhero to me. Because he's kind of like a superhero, just without all the powers, <laughs> and he doesn't do anything right. <laughs> no, I love Key. He's a funny. Superhero. I, love, I love you, Key. Me too, um, Key. So that was Dark Man. Yes. It's great. It's a great movie. Love the movie. Big fan of the movie. Uh, another film of that era that we can mention is. Uh, and I almost brought it up because you did mention it briefly, is The Shadow. Yes. That great show. Alec Baldwin film, The Shadow, which when you watch it now, you swear it's Billy Baldwin. <laughs> yes. You swear. Yeah. You're like, there's no way Alec agreed to this. That's Billy. <laughs> or Steven with a lot of makeup and some, in like a, like a, like a I know, heel you're and... right. It doesn't look like Alec. Uh, I, it's forgettable. Unfortunately, it's a forgettable movie for me. Very forgettable. Uh, I forgot it, and I probably watched it recently. And now that was based on the back in old time radio. Yeah, the serials. The, the serial. He was like Lone Ranger. Like the Lone Ranger. He was a uh, he was a radio uh, superhero. And now I don't know if they had uh, comic books or he was part of a comic strip, but he might have been because. Uh, that happened. That it, would go. It for. might have been. I know recently they did because uh, the Shadow is they brought back as a comic by uh, Dynamite Comics. Yes. And they've done a Shadow Batman crossover. Okay. Yes. I, which I was like I've a multiple, that. like a five issue arc, like special, and it was Batman and the Shadow. So if you're into the Shadow, I would highly recommend seeking that out. Yeah, yeah. I, I you very probably never get a shadow movie ever again. Maybe Amazon or Hulu will get the rights yeah, and they'll that, do like a a shadow series. And or that something. would be cool if they actually, you know, if they actually put the time and good writing into it and good special it would be awesome. effects. I think it would be awesome because there are some superheroes that were left by the wayside from radio and from. Uh, and I'll mention one more that. Uh, was a movie that didn't do that well. And The Phantom. Yes. Was a superhero. You love The Phantom. I love The Phantom, but also the reason The Phantom doesn't do well is because a lot of The Phantom people are relating to Indiana Jones. Yes. Because, you know, that. It's it, a lot of similarities. There's a lot of similarities. So lot that's of why The Phantom didn't do as well. But well, there I, was. I for people that have seen The Phantom, when Black Panther was coming out, which. You can't really see. I, I, sh I should have realized this. I'm wearing a Black Panther shirt, but it's a dark print on a dark shirt. So yes. you can't actually. It probably just looks like I'm just wearing a black T-shirt. So I thought it was a good idea to point out that I actually am wearing a Black Panther shirt. That's right. But when is... Black Panther was coming out last year, everyone kind of thought that it was going to be kind of like the Phantom because a lot of the trailers and the look seemed very similar to that of the Phantom. Okay, yes. Luckily, Black Panther is a much better movie. Black Panther is a totally different movie. It was very different. Very different. And, uh, I think a lot of similarities, though. There are. but uh, And as far as now the comic book, uh, Black Panther of the comic book and the movie, how do you feel? Do you feel they did a, a good job? Well, I mean, I've only read a couple of issues of Black Panther. I recently just picked up uh, a run from like two years ago that's considered one of the best Black Panther runs. I forget the author's name, but he's very well loved. If you look up Black Panther 2016, I believe is when the run, it'll pop up and it's a beloved run of Black Panther. And from what I can tell, they did a very good job. There's a lot of differences too, but I've read a lot of like Avengers comics or Civil War or different things where T'Challa was a character, where Black Panther was a character. And I do think they got him very well. Some people think he was not strong enough. He kind of seems like the weakest part of his whole movie. But I think that's... You're looking at the character of Black Panther at year 20, year 50, you know, he's been Black Panther for a long time. This is, he's literally only been Black Panther for a few days going in. He's and, only been yes. king of Wakanda for a few days going into the movie. Okay, He's yeah. been the Black Panther for a little bit longer, but he just became the king. He's fully becoming more recently in the comics. They just made Black Panther the, the leader of the Avengers, oh. which also has oh. to do with the movies because for people who don't really know, Iron Man was a smaller character. He was always a bigger character. He was always a popular character. But he was never on the level of a character that he is in the movies. 
Iron Man was never that big. He was never the number two or number one of the Marvel Universe. It was almost right. always Captain America or Spider-Man or somebody in the X-Men. Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. And because of the rights issues to a lot of stuff, they had to kind of move things around. And since Iron Man is what kicked everything off, and because Robert Downey Jr. is so amazing yes. as Tony Stark and Iron Man, that became the focal point of the franchise. And he still is, but I feel like they've kind of been able to do a good job making Chris Evans and Captain America yeah. just as big of a character now. Yes, yes. To the I point agree. that when he appears in Avengers Infinity War, every time I saw it, the whole crowd started like screaming and oh, clapping because no, he didn't show up until about like 40 minutes in. They did a great job with them, with those characters. And when I was younger, I, I said that I didn't read a lot of Marvel. The Marvel I did read was Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, some Iron Man. I used to read some Iron Man. Incredible Hulk. Comics. And uh, Incredible Hulk a little bit. I know you but, know the Hulk because of the show. Right. Because the show was very popular. I wasn't a big fan of that. But that show. was, it was one of the biggest things going on. It was probably the biggest thing in the comic book movie television world at the time. In the television world, it was... Uh, at the Hulk. time, that was probably the biggest thing. Oh, the Hulk was big. And Lou Ferrigno playing the Hulk. And Bill, Bill Bixby was very well-known TV person. So he was, uh, he was a character on a lot of shows. So when Bill Bixby be, played Bruce Banner, that was like... That it was, was a big deal. That was a big deal. And then he took Lou Ferrigno. As I said, I wasn't a big fan of it, but... Uh, but I did like the Hulk, and then uh, then they had animated shows which were not as good as the animated shows when you were growing up. Yes, uh, and there's a lot of videos about a lot of the animated shows for uh, me growing up. Uh, Nostalgia Critic just put out a really good video about the X Men: The Animated Series, which by many people is considered what really started everything. That and Batman: The Animated Series is what made people start to take animation for kids seriously and starting to take superheroes seriously because both Batman the Animated Series and X-Men were not making them for children. They're like, we're making these for 13-year-olds and up. These are for, these are adult, preteen. These are, a, they pretty much, they were like, we're trying to make these for adults. This isn't what we're going for. We're not going for a kiddie thing. And for X-Men the Animated Series, that was a long uphill battle. The head of Fox Kids at the time she was supposed to, well, not she was supposed to, she was trying to make the X-Men The Animated Series for something like 10 to 15 years before she got wow. to make it. She actually had to become the president in order to make it. In order to make it, she had to put her job on the line. Wow. And So they said, we're going to let you do this, but if it doesn't work out, you're, you're gone. And luckily, X-Men The Animated Series was amazing. It, it was, and, uh, and I was really impressed because, as you said, it was... There were still not that many uh, movies with superhero movies. There was Superman, there was Batman, and it, so there wasn't, but, but then they had X-Men, and as you said, the Batman animated series. Also, there was a Superman animated yes. series. Yes. But I remember the X-Men. And then they also did a Spider-Man Spider animated series, which was great. And the X-Men was so good that I was taking you and a friend, <coughs> and I called up the house of friends of ours, and uh, the, his youngest sister answered the phone. And she said to me, oh, I'm coming with you guys, too. Yeah. And I was surprised because I know that was always what uh, comic books wanted was to get women and mm -hmm. girls uh, interested in comics. And X-Men did it. Yes. And the show, because I, I said to her, you're coming to see X-Men? And she says, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the show. And that well, one of the big things they did in the show is they made the character of Jubilee, who, when you look at it now, Jubilee's not really that great of a character. But Jubilee was the character of the audience. She was the audience surrogate. She was the character who's just coming to the mansion for the first time and is like, what is all this? And they're explaining everything to her. And she's a young girl who doesn't know, understand her powers. And by putting her in the forefront, it made a lot of younger girls go, this is awesome. I like this. And they already had the boys because they're like, Wolverine! Wolverine's in it! I don't care about anything other than Wolverine! Okay, but now, now I want to ask you, because you know more about Marvel. Now, in the movies of the X-Men, they made 
Wolverine pretty much the central character. Yes. In a way. In the comics, who is the leader of the X-Men? Well, see, that's also very similar to the other thing. They kind of have made Wolverine the head of the X-Men right. in time, but it was always either... Well, I mean, Professor X is the leader. Okay. But the, the on-field leader was almost always Cyclops or Jean Grey. Or Jean Grey, right. And then also Beast sometimes would get involved. That's why I kind of like how they have now, which if you've seen X-Men First Class or Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, or the new Dark Phoenix coming out, they've kind of made Beast the number two to Charles Xavier, to Professor X. Yes. And I really like that dichotomy, and they kind of... They, when the first time they introduced Beast was in X-Men The Last Stand, and they kind of played on that as him and Charles had a long history, but you never saw any of that. Right. Because Kelsey Grammer just signed on to that one. <laughs> yeah. And I liked Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey as Grammer the, was good. As Beast. I really liked it. He didn't it. sing was... about scrambled eggs. I was a little annoyed <laughs> about that. I wanted him to be more like Frasier. But... Yeah, no, I, I thought he was great. I thought with the that's makeup just, job. That's and... just me. I just wanted to see Frasier you wanted to in see blue Frasier. makeup. That's just what I wanted to see. No, I, I loved because I, I was familiar with Beast. You yes. know, I was familiar with uh, and to see Beast and see its uh, Kelsey Grammer was great. Uh, and I, as I mentioned, I, I loved the X-Men because the X-Men, to me, it was, you know, I was watching these other superhero films, but now you had the X-Men that actually brought in the Holocaust. Oh, yeah. That no. happened, you know? The Holocaust, and, it has a lot of allegories to civil rights, to gay rights, to just... Yeah, yeah. You know, anyone who is an outsider, outcast, like, it's very... It speaks to a lot of people in a lot of different ways, and it hits on a lot of themes that a lot of other stories and comic books at the time, and even now to a certain extent, weren't able to tell. Marvel did a great job of that. Marvel did do a great job of uh, the young kid with problems, the young kid with that was, who didn't well, that was fit the, in. The Stan Lee thing. It was, yeah. it was always like a kid or a man with like psychological problems, or he didn't fit in, or yeah, yeah, he was big with that. And uh, and and uh, I saw him in an interview where he said that the uh, X Men were the original teenage mutants. Yes, and they yeah, were no, that's right. Mutants with pro and. And Stan Lee did ha like having regular people thrust into all of a sudden these powers would be upon them. And they, also, they had social problems. So they had enough problems, and now they had to deal with these powers, which were problems. Well, that was the big difference between DC and Marvel, where DC is a world of gods. They're all gods. Even Cyborg, who is like that kind of character yeah. of a guy who just gets thrust into this, Becomes a god almost because he's like the most powerful. Green Lantern. And Green Lantern's a god. Is Superman a god. is a god. Aquaman is a god. They're god. You're you're playing with gods and monsters. Wonder Woman is a god. A yeah. Goddess. yeah. In Marvel, it's real people who are thrust into greatness. So, and a god. There's one. There's a couple of gods. Yeah. There's some gods. Because you, you got Thor. Who is literally a Norse god? Yeah, which is a little different in the comics, and I think they did a much better job in in the movies. But that's just me. Who and says Submariner, that. who is like their Aquaman. Submariner doesn't exist. Okay. Nobody who's ever heard this knows who Submariner is. All right. Okay. No, <laughs> Namor was only in uh, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance, like first video game, and that's it. Because the Namor rights are with Universal. And oh, is that what it's happened? It's like stuck in, Namor's stuck in purgatory. Oh, all right. Okay. And I think maybe with Aquaman, they're going to try to push to get Namor, but maybe they're even get pushed further away because they're like, we really don't want Namor. And also, the character of Namor, people don't like the character of Aquaman. It took so long to make a movie out of Aquaman. One, people don't really know who Namor is, and two... Nobody really cares about Namor. All right, I have to agree. I have some Namor comics. I do. Well, I've read some yeah, Mariner read, as a yeah. kid. Yes. But uh, but I agree. He's uh, not as good as uh, the other characters. And now with DC, though, I'm glad you brought that up. That almost every except for Batman. Yes. Batman is somebody, but Batman is. He's a, a man rich. who's killed a god. <laughs> He's a man who fights gods. <laughs> Not necessarily so. He fights 
a lot of He fought psychos. Dark Side and he killed yes. him with a bo- The only time Batman's ever killed was when he killed a god. A god, okay, but but when you get And then he got thrust through time. That's when, a whole nother the comics are weird. All right, when you get I, know, I love comics, but some comics are weird. Well, comics to me they're like they're like soap operas. They have to always add to the storyline. Yeah, to, like wrestling. To, to keep, yeah, wrestling as well to keep you interested. Mm-hmm. So they change things. But the Batman I knew was a guy who dealt with mostly psychotic villains. Yes. Most of his villains had you know most of his villains don't go to jail. They go to Arkham Asylum. Mm-hmm. So so you know and and he's a man who dresses up like a bat to fight crime. Yes. So he's psychotic, too. So it's a bunch of psychos, but I love Batman. So now um, I want to bring up the uh, the next video. At the time, I saw uh, the only superhero movies that they really had was Superman. Then Tim Burton came out with Batman. And, uh, and then I was starved for superhero movies. And then this movie came out in the theaters... And it was based on uh, it was based on the these superheroes that are different from your normal superheroes, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Wow, I've never heard of them. <laughs> Let's go to the video. Our family grows. The city itself will be our playground to use as we please, rewarding ourselves and punishing. Our enemies. We've been looking for you, Miss O'Neill. There is a new enemy. Freaks of nature. Together, we will punish these creatures. What the heck was that? Looked like sort of a big title in a trench coat. And we're back. We're back. And now that was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the first movie. That was the first movie, the first of now six Ninja Turtle movies. Six Ninja Turtles. There was three of the original trilogy, then an animated film in 2007 called TMNT, which was like technically a sequel to one through three, but nobody really could understand if it was or it wasn't. (laughs) And then they made in 2014... The Michael Bay produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film, which has a lot of problems, but I enjoy it. It has a lot of, there's like 50% crap and then 50% really fun in there. And I like to kind of toe through that line. And then the second one was a movie where I was like in denial, where I was like, this is great. Because it had Bebop and Rocksteady, who were characters from the animated cartoon, who were never in the movies and they were hilarious but the more and more i thought about it the more i was like they're only in the movie for like two scenes <laughs> and then the rest of the movie is kind of bad they like gave you all the things the fans wanted but they did them all the wrong way because the first one like it doesn't have casey jones doesn't have krang it doesn't have Bebop and Rocksteady, Baxter Stockman, a lot of these big characters. Shredder's in it, but the Shredder's a little weird. And then the second one is the one where they're like, we're going to give you everything you asked for. And everybody's like, yeah, you give us everything you asked for. And it's like, you, how'd you do it wrong? <laughs> they gave you what you wanted, but they did it wrong. Yeah, but maybe it's not that they did it wrong. It's they gave us what we wanted, and we just realized, oh, that stuff doesn't actually really work. 
And they gave you too much? Maybe they gave you well, too much. Well, Krang is a character. He's a he's also in the animated series and not in the movies. He's like a he kind of looks like a like a pink brain. And he's an alien, he moves around, he's in the torso of like a robot body. And like he fights the turtles. And he always has a voice like Krang, I'm Krang. And they decide to have him voiced by Brad Garrett. Oh, really? Who has, like, the deepest voice in, yeah. in Hollywood. Everybody and it, loves it. But it's him man. trying to do the Krang <laughs> voice, and it's really weird. It's just, like, it's strange, but it's fun. And then Casey Jones, they take this, like, Casey Jones is like, I'm a badass vigilante. I wear hockey stuff, and I beat up crime people, and I hang out with turtles. <laughs> and they had him played by Stephen Amell, who plays Oliver Queen in the Arrow TV series. So he's a oh. fan favorite. Yeah. People love him. He's very good as Oliver Queen. They put him in that, and he's just whiny. I want to be a cop. I'm going to be a cop someday. Yeah. And he wears the hockey mask for one scene. Okay, in all, in all honesty, because of talking to you, I have no desire to see those turtle movies. And uh, I love the first two. The, no, I went to the movie theater to see that one because, as I said, I was starved for a superhero movie. Yes. And it was like, and I knew about the Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles because my cousin Paul, my youngest cousin, was. We went to a comic book store. And he had, there was like four, the f four first issues. And I thought it was so cool. I thought it was so funny that it was, they took these turtles and turned them into superheroes. I hope Paul still campy. has those. I hope he does too. He had the first four uh, Oh, I hope you still have them because that's, that's your kid's college right there. <laughs> yeah. The first four issues, first edition of Ninja Turtles. And he used like, to take very good care of his comics. Oh, I'm sure he so, did. He I'm did. Sure he so, did. so, uh, so, uh, uh. When they made the movie, I was like, I got to go see this. And I know a lot of young kids went to see it. And they did a good job because uh, it had a lot of fights. It wasn't... Uh, some of these movies were brutal, yet they they were brutal, but sometimes they didn't necessarily show any gore oh, yeah. or anything. And uh, I thought it was like the coolest thing that these turtles are ninjas doing this career and fighting ninjas. And then you got Casey Jones, who was cool. You had April O'Neil. It was just there was so much to like about them, and then the and they love pizza. <laughs> they love pizza. I mean, tur turtles who are ninjas and love pizza. See, to me, so. this is great because to you, you're like, this is crazy. To me, I'm like, I've this is like I've <laughs> I can't think of a world where the Ninja Turtles don't exist. I know. So to me, it's not like anything crazy out of the ordinary. I'm like, yeah, Ninja Turtles love pizza. <laughs> they live in the sewer. They and live in New York City. Of course, they love pizza. They live in New York City. The worst pizza in New York City would be thrown in the trash. It's still the best pizza anywhere else. Of course they love pizza. Yeah. No, no. It, it's really cool. They live in New York in an apartment. Don't ask how that happened. Well, no, no. They live in the sewer. In the sewer. Oh, they go they, up. They hang out at April's apartment. And it's April's apartment. And the All second right. one, they live in April's apartment for a little bit. And then they get the really cool, like, like old, like, uh, like train station that was abandoned. And they live in that. All right, and, and then they kind of do something like that in the new ones too. And one of the things they really do in the new ones is they play up the the turtles really well, I think, for laughs and fun. One of the weird things they did to try to pull people in was they made Johnny Knoxville the voice of Leonardo. Oh yeah, who's the leader? Only in the first one, not in the second one. And it was fun. It, like it was nothing bad, but I was like, there was there was no reason to. Do it? Yeah. And there was no reason because everybody else voiced themselves, so there was no reason to, like, whoever did the mocap voiced that character. Yeah. So there was no reason to do that. And then the second one, they had who, the person who mocapped it for one and two voice the character. But there was no reason to do that. But they, they have some fun stuff, like Raphael's always trying to leave, like he does. That's his character. But my, Michelangelo, like, one of my favorite things in the first one is... But we're never going to finish our Christmas, our, our hip-hop Christmas album, bro. You're the hype man. Come on, man. And, like, there's a lot of stuff like that, like, that Michelangelo does that some people don't like, but I think is essential Michelangelo. Yeah. And right. I, I love the Ninja Turtles. We can talk about that for okay, hours. Okay, yeah. About else. Well, no, I just want to I wanna wrap it up with uh, the Michael Bay movies, though. I think they, thought, they tried to do other stuff for the fact that they were bigger budgets. 
Oh, yeah, right. they were much they bigger bu budgets. They yeah. were full CGI. Yeah, full C where the other ones were uh, practical. They were wearing yeah, costumes. Yeah, practical. And that's and the difference of, you know, 20 years, too. Or well, 14. No, no, 20 years. 20 but to me, years. to me, that trailer we saw, it hasn't dated. To me, I could sit back. Oh, no, and, I, could, I could watch that movie again I right could watch now. that one and the, se the first two. The second one is The Secret of the Ooze. Which, as a kid... I was obsessed with, and I loved that movie. And now I see all the shortcomings that everybody talks about. I still love it, yeah. but I see all the issues. How like they made them not really use weapons because they were too violent, and it was supposed to be for like kids because kids were really into it. So they had them cut yeah. down. The yeah, uh, because, yeah, because the first one, the first one is like nonstop battle. Mm -hmm. When they're fighting those guys, those ninjas dressed up in the in black fighting them, yeah. that was one nonstop battle to from one floor to another floor, and then and then in the secret of the ooze, you're right, they calmed down because so many kids loved it. Yep, and then and then that's what happens. Sometimes kids ruin a good thing. And uh, we were, we were told that uh, Thomas wants us to know that he loves John Candy. Oh, really? Now John Candy isn't in any superhero movies, but. <laughs> He, do, I'm, I'm sure he does love superhero movies, Thomas. Oh yeah, John Candy, big superhero guy. John Candy's a big superhero. Uh, I mean, he yeah. is in Home Alone, and you can say that Kevin McAllister is almost a vigilante. Okay, yeah, Kevin McAllister. Let's say superhero, but vigilante. You might be able to say. The second one, there's, there's no, he's not defending a house in the second one. He's just stopping crimes. Yeah. He's just stopping crimes. Vigilante. He's Vigilante. going around New York City, stopping crimes, and making Tim Curry get on his knees. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But, uh, so I would say John Candy is almost a superhero. Almost. Very close. Almost. Very close. Very close to a superhero, Thomas. He's a super guy. Super guy. Super guy. Super great John, guy. John Candy is a super great guy. Super he great is. guy. Yakety yak. You know, great outdoors. Great One outdoors. One of the greatest films ever made. Uncle Buck. Is Uncle almost, Buck. Almost has super heroes. You guy. almost will be old enough to watch that. <laughs> cool runnings. Cool feel runnings. Feel the rhythm, feel the rhyme. <laughs> and welcome Gentlemen. to John Candy Talk. And, that's and this, has been, uh, this has been John Candy Talk. <laughs> Where you host John and Candy. <laughs> oh, well, no, because I was going to say Spaceball is a superhero, but it's not sci-fi. That's the fiction. closest. Yeah. Spaceballs is the closest he has to a superhero movie. To a superhero. I don't the think superhero they... movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there was one where they were playing cops, and he tried... He dra I saw him making fun of Peter Pan one time. So that's not, that's not... Nope, that doesn't count. Okay. Peter Pan's... Good try. All right. I was trying Good for try. you, Thomas. Good Thomas, try. I, lo count. I love you, Thomas. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, Thomas. He says he loves it. Thomas loves it. Thomas having a good time. Thomas, tell your dad you want to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. One more time. Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. Cowabunga, That's what dude. you want to watch. There's six of them. You got plenty of time. <laughs> Cowabunga, dude. You can start him with the 90s. I know he likes vintage movies. So you can start him with the 91, and then you can start with two. Just skip three when they go back in time to feudal Japan. There's a reason why we haven't mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you just go on to the Michael Bay ones. Or the animated one, too. The animated one's good. I got it on DVD. I got a four-pack. I got a four-pack DVD. Next time we hang out, slide under the table. There you go. You got it. All Merry right. Christmas. Under the table. <laughs> under the table. You know? Under the table. But, uh... Yeah. So let's go with some more superhero movies. Yes. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's go back a little bit into Marvel, because we okay. do have Captain Marvel coming out this week. Yes. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Me too. You're I looking am. forward to seeing it. It's getting mixed to positive reviews. Mostly, they're saying it's good, but if you compare it to Black Panther and other, the point that I want to get to is. We're talking about Ninja Turtles. We're talking about Shadow and all this other stuff. At the time, you were so starved for superhero movies. You'd watch anything. I, yes. Now you've gotten to the point where you're so oversaturated, you barely even watch. A lot. Uh, You'll go out of your way to watch certain stuff, but you, there's some movies I'll be like, hey, Dad, you got to watch this superhero movie. You're like, oh, I don't care. You're absolutely right. And you were the person who got me into superheroes as a kid. And you're absolutely right. And I believe that I told you I was superheroed out. 
Yes. So I was superhero. You were superhero out. out. I was. It was. I. You were like. I think I, I know the movie that turned it around for you, but you were definitely superhero out. Okay. Uh, I'd like to hear the movie that turned. I it. think you were superhero out. And then I said, Dad, I want to take you to the movie that they finally made about my favorite superhero of all time. And you saw Deadpool. Yes. And Deadpool is what turned it around for you because Deadpool is the superhero that knows that he's a superhero. And knows that, Thomas, you can't watch, you can't watch Deadpool yet. When you're an adult, you can watch as much Deadpool as you like. Not yet. Deadpool is my favorite superhero of all time. I got into him in high school reading the comics because... He's a character that breaks the fourth wall. He's mentally deranged, and he knows that he's in a comic. And in the movie, he is a superhero that knows that he's in a superhero movie. And one of the first things he says, I'm not going to say it verbatim, but, you know, uh, who did I have to fondle to get my own picture? And he says his name rhymes with Pulverine. (laughs) And they do a lot of stuff like that. And I think... At a time where superheroes were getting oversaturated and played out, enters a a movie that will fully embraces the comedy and fun of a superhero movie. Yes, and and he showed that you can have some good comedy and good an adult. He wanted to make an adult movie. It took him as it it took him like eight years to get that movie off. It took a very long time because he was in X Men Origins Wolverine as that character only so he so Ryan Reynolds could make a Deadpool movie. And they ruined the Deadpool character in X-Men Origins Wolverine. Right. And then for years, he was trying to make it until it went dead. And they weren't going to make it. And there was a leak of test footage that the director and Ryan Reynolds made. And they haven't said, they'll never say who leaked the test footage. There's rumors that it might have been the director, it might have been Ryan Reynolds, it might have been somebody in the director's team. Someone leaked the test footage. It went out. It blew up online in 2014, and it was super popular, and everybody said, why aren't they making this? This is great. We love this. And then the studio saw how many people were in love with it, and they said, you know, maybe we should make this movie. So they, they gave it a very small budget, let Ryan Reynolds do it. Ryan Reynolds you know, went on as a producer. Like he put all his namesake into it, and Ryan Reynolds wasn't that big of a star. He, he was a name, but he wasn't really that big. He was still mostly known as Van Wilder. But you put him into it, and you do all that, and it comes out in February at a time where superhero movies aren't really a big thing, and it blew up. It's the, one, it's the second highest grossing R-rated film of all time. And with a low budget, they didn't give him a big budget, and he makes... Deadpool actually mentions that in his movie. Yes. That we have a, such a low budget that uh, we can't even afford enough X-Men. Yeah. And, uh, and we're only looking at a model. We and that go- was an improv. That was, a, that was an improv line that they put in. It was like, surprise, he goes to the X-Mansion. You know, it's weird. I only see, I only ever see you two. It's like the the, the uh, studio couldn't afford another X Men. Yeah, yeah. No, no. That was... And they and uh, the other thing in the movie, he they they go to a big firefight. He brings all the guns and he leaves the guns in the car. <laughs> and originally in the script, they had a big firefight. In the budget, they couldn't afford it, so they wrote into the script. He left the guns in the car. Oh, see, I didn't know that. And, and that I... made for a better movie. Yes. And then they made the second one with a bigger budget, which I still love. I don't like it as much as the first one. I know you and a lot of other people think it's better than the first one. I really personally, I think the first one's better, but that's just me. I'm a Deadpool. I'm a Deadpool purist. I I I enjoyed it, and as I'm not someone who reads the comics, so you know, I'm a different audience. I'm the audience that goes to the movies. Yes. To see these superheroes. So, for me, I loved it. And I would, I'm would. i looking forward to at least one more. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, we'll get one more. We'll see what happens. I think those movies make so much money. And Kevin Feige has already said, because Marvel is absorbing all of the Fox Marvel movies, the MCU. Kevin Feige, who runs the MCU, has already said, I'm very open to making an R-rated MCU movie. And I'm very open to making an R-rated uh, Deadpool movie. So I think Ryan Reynolds Deadpool does so well. I think it's going to do fine. And much in the same way you felt about Deadpool, I kind of feel I'm very excited for Captain Marvel, but somehow, and I didn't see this coming, I'm more excited for Shazam 
which comes out next month, because to me, Shazam looks like that same reinvigorating thing that three years ago Deadpool 1 was. Right. Where it's a... the Captain Marvel is a 15-year-old boy... Right. ...who gets the powers of a god every time he says his name. So when he says Shazam, lightning strikes, and he becomes... He has the powers of Superman. He's pretty much so, Superman. But he can't tell anyone his name, because he says his name, he gets struck by lightning. Yeah, that's it's cool. Great. That's really cool. It's a really fun thing. And originally, the character of Shazam was named Captain Marvel. Yes. And he, I believe he predates Marvel. Or it was the same time, but it's a, that's a whole thing. That's a whole thing that we could talk about for He started around the same time as Superman, Captain Marvel, though. And, and something it's about the, long to the make rights movie went from, Captain Marvel went from one comic book to, comic another, to another, and comic. that was a whole other thing. And that's how they learned. That's why you can't kill off a character for a long time. That's why you have to bring the characters back. Because the rights can lapse. The that's rights all, can, that's and a that's whole And that's what thing. happened with Captain Marvel. That's a whole thing. That yeah, that's a whole other thing. We don't have enough time to go no. into that, unfortunately. But I think Shazam looks like that same movie, and they just had another trailer come out yesterday. And I was very... If you haven't seen the Shazam trailer, I highly recommend watching it. It looks like a ton of fun. Yeah. And Shazam was Captain Marvel, and... Captain Marvel was Miss Marvel. Yes. And then but, they changed Captain Miss Marvel to Captain Marvel. But there still is a Miss Marvel in Marvel Comics. She's like the she's not the sidekick, but she's like a secondary character to Captain Marvel. Right. And then they made Captain Marvel Shazam, which is what he would say when he would get struck by lightning. He would right. say Shazam. So they just went, his name is now Shazam, which is the funniest thing, because now he can't say what his name is. Right, we, which I'm looking forward to It's it very well. funny. I'm looking forward to it. But so, I'm very excited for that. So anyway, th this was a great show. We great talked, show. We talked about a lot of great superheroes. Best show we've had this week. Best show we, all week. Best show uh, we've had all week. So can we end with a, we'll end with a video. Of, you want to uh, end with a video? Yeah. Okay, we're well, gonna we'll say goodnight, everybody. Say goodnight. We're gonna go to the video and then we're gonna call it a night. And we're gonna call it a night. And don't forget, I'm doing what's, the roast. Much. Uh, so All right, so we're gonna show a video. It's a video of one of the the superhero movie that started. No, the second one. Oh, so it's not the that, everything I was gonna say. I'm gonna throw <laughs> out the window now because he whispered me the wrong thing. We're gonna my dad's favorite superhero movie. We're gonna end with a trailer for that. Then we're gonna call it a night. Thank you guys. We'll see you very soon. See you next week. Have a great night. Here's the trail for Superman 2. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching. Superman 2. The adventure continues with the three villains from Krypton. Each one with the same powers as Superman. Each one dedicated to violence against mankind. Think of it. Three supervillains. Mm. Or four if you count him twice. The adventure continues in Paris with Lois Lane. I believe this is your floor. And the romance continues. The adventure continues in Washington. The world is on the brink of destruction. Superman, can you hear me? And Metropolis is in ruins. Superman, help me! Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Superman! General, would you care to step outside? Revenge! 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 <laughs> now we're cooking, huh? Big one's just as strong as Superman. If you've only seen the first part, 
you haven't seen the best part. The adventure continues in Superman 2.